Welcome to Hope Academy. My name is Mr. O and today I'm going to be going over specifically numbers 13 through 15 on the SAT Math Level 2. Um, this is a practice exam provided on crackset.net. And so when I'm doing these questions, I usually do them real quick and then I explain in depth how to do the question. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on number 13. So number 13. So x okay, over whatever, sign x equals to 1 over 4, or aka to sine x over cosine x equals to 1 over 4. Well, tangent sine over cosine, okay, cosine over sine, okay, sine squared x, cosine squared x equals to 1 over Okay, so for number 13, my final answer is A, and now I'm going to explain to you how I was able to get to this answer. So for this question, this is a trigonometric question, just based on, you know, trig functions. And so make sure you know your trig functions in general. So um, when we talk about this type of concept for number 13, they said that secant x to cosecant, so technically it's just divided by cosecant x, will equal to 1 over 4. And so before doing so, I do want to review certain, certain terminologies or you know concepts that are important or relevant to this. So one of the things is that secant x will equal to 1 over cosine x. Um, cosecant x will equal to 1 over sine x. And tangent x, and because there's that coming up, tangent x will technically be your sine over cosine x. So sine x over cosine x, and your cotangent x will equal to your cosine x over sine x. And so these identities right here will help you um, solve this question out. And so they ask you this, you know, secant over uh, cosecant, and they also ask you what's the ratio for tangent x over cotangent x, okay? And so that is the big question that we're trying to solve. With that being stated, I first did personally was that I just simplified this to an easier terminology. And I understood that this secant right here, this secant function right here that I'm talking about, I could do it right, I could change it into a different format. So this question, I can make it one over cosine x over one over sine x using these identities. What happens is that this is 1 over cosine x divided by 1 over sine x, or is it 1 over cosine x times sine x because of the reciprocal rule. So I just skipped it real quick. I did it in my mind. And I did sine x over cosine x, which is great. Okay, And so this is still equals to 1 fourth. And this is the key important thing I need to keep track of. This statement right here, I will need soon enough. So afterwards, I'm going to continue on and do the same thing for this in tangent x over co cotangent x. I'm going to simplify the terminology. So now I'm going to go ahead and do so right here. So tangent x, as I mentioned right here, sine x over cosine x. Divided by, technically your cotangent is cosine x. And I'm going to bring this up so you can see what I'm doing. Cosine x over sine x. And I, as I mentioned before, you could write this out in a singular line, but I'm not going to spend time, you know, redoing that. But what happens is it's going to be technically sine x over cosine x times sine x over cosine x twice. And thus what happens is we sine squared x over cosine squared x. Thus, the, the way you're going to do this is that if you notice right here, sine x over cosine x equals to 1 fourth. These are both squared. So technically, I could take this and square both top and bottom. So it would be 1 squared over 4 squared, which is how I got my final answer of 1 16th. And thus why for that question number 13, my final answer for that question is 1 over 16. And that concludes my explanation. And so now we'll go ahead and continue. But before doing so, I do want to set this up so that you can see the problem properly. So going ahead right here. Okay, perfect. Okay, so number 14. So in rectangular 2 contains all points x and y, what is the area that contains that? Interesting. y minus 1. So technically, um, y minus 1. So this will become negative 1. This will become 2, 2, negative 1. Okay. 2 times x, so 2, 2, doesn't matter. This will become 8, no, 12. And 12, okay. So the distance between this will be 12. Distance between negative 1 and 2 is 3. So 12 times 3 is 36. And so for number 14, I got the my final answer will be um, D for this question. And now I'm going to go ahead and explain to you how I was able to get to this answer. So 
I'm going to do this on a separate piece of paper because I already wrote on the rectangle itself, the sort of coordinates and whatever not. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just recopy the question real quick. So right here, they give you sort of like an X, Y, and they create this rectangle right here. And they explain it will be 0, 3, 0, 0, 6, 3, and 6, 0. And they also mentioned that this is for X and Y. And they said, what is the area of the rectangle that has that contains the point 2 X, Y minus 1? That's what the question asks. So what I needed to do is that this sort of question is sort of like a geometry based question on areas of rectangle, but it's also an idea on transformations. So what literally this means right here, this statement is that I'm going to take every X coordinate right here and multiply by two. That's why zero times two will be still zero. Um, zero times two will still be zero. Six times two will become 12 and six times two will become 12. Thus my first change afterwards. If you look at the y coordinate, it says y minus 1. So I must subtract everything by 1. So this right here, 0, will become negative 1. I subtract from 3, will be 2. Minus 1 will be 2. And here will be negative 1. And thus, how I got my new coordinates. So my new coordinates will be from 0, negative 1, 0, 2, 12, 2, and 12, negative 1. Now, I need to find the side lengths. So from between 0 and 12 for the x, because this is the x coordinate length, will be 12. But from here, it will be from 2 to negative 1, which is 3. Thus, in the end, 12 times 3, which I'm solving out right here, will equal to 36. And that is my area, which is the final answer that they were asking for. And thus, how I got my final answer of D. And that concludes my explanation for number 14. To continue on to the last question for today. So number 15. Number 15. Okay. Number 15. In the right triangle. A, B, C, okay, B measures 90, C measures 27, A, okay, A, B equals to 9. What is the length of the hypotenuse? Okay, so uh, this is what they want, so I'm going to do 27, A plus 9, over X, over 27, okay, so I need a calculator for this. So I gotta go to mode. Change it. Okay. Oops. Okay, so for number 15, my final answer is going to be D. And now I'm going to explain to you how I was able to get to this answer so quickly. So for number 15, they tell me sort of the setup. And usually when you're doing these type of questions, you do want to create a quick sketch so that you could visualize what's going on without making any sort of mistakes along the way. And so that's what I did. I sketched it out. They told me that if B is going to be 90 degrees. They told me that AB is going to be 9. And they told me that C is going to be 27 degrees. And so right off... I, I set it up. Afterwards, I noticed that because this is a right triangle, I could use the, the, the concept of Sokotoa. Okay, and Sokotoa is only applicable when it is of a right triangle. And so when I'm doing this, I did Sokotoa and I recognized that across from 27 is 9. Thus, it has opposite and I'm looking for a hypotenuse. So I'm looking for something that has opposite and hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse. Thus, how I identified right off that I was going to be using a sine function. So I set it up. Sine 27 equals to opposite over hypotenuse, so 9 over x. And thus, I set it up right here. The one thing I do want to mention and make sure you understand is that when I am punching this into the calculator, I must be careful to, to check whether or not my mode is in the correct setting. And when I was doing this, it was not in the correct setting for me. It was in a radian format. Thus, for me, at least on the TI-9, I pushed mode the button mode, and I went down to the exponential, um, it says, no, angle format, and thus there's different modes like radian, degree, uh, gradient, or whatever not, but because this question is based on angles of a triangle, I changed it to degree mode and punched in nine, sine, 9 divided by sine 27. I pushed the green button and pushed enter so that I could change it to a decimal value, and thus how I was able to get to the answer D, and that concludes my explanation for number 15. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter so that we could continue to make content like this. I hope you have a wonderful day.